God is love. God loves you, God loves me. So what do I mean when I say Jesus loves me? And I know because the Bible tells me so. If God is Jesus and Jesus is God, what do we mean? Well, there's an orthodox theological understanding of how the Holy Trinity engages in a triune relationship of love between all three persons in the Trinity. This is called perichoresis. The perichoresis is the dance of love. At a Greek wedding, there are three dancers who dance around in circles, weaving in and out in a beautiful pattern of a flowing motion. They go faster and faster all the time while staying in perfect rhythm and in sync with one another. They dance so quickly that if you look at them, they become a blur. That's what the Trinity is like. A communal triune dance of love, a mutual giving and receiving, and harmonious and flowing relationship of grace and beauty. We are told to love God with all of our heart, mind, and soul, and to love our neighbors as equally as we love ourselves. Therefore, today we will be exploring how I will tell you about heavenly things so that we may be healed and loved in order to live a spiritual life. So as we continue to explore the life and ministry of Jesus during this Lenten season, we may recall how the Lord is the great physician who seeks to heal and save us to help us when we suffer and encourage us to pray and worship the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, and soul. In our story from the Gospel of John today, we have Nicodemus, who under the cover of darkness went to seek Jesus. And Nicodemus pointed out that Jesus must be a teacher of God to perform miracle after miracle, like he did. But Jesus then responded to him with a mysterious expression. Now, he did this because he was trying to teach, and he was using this ancient technique to teach by leading someone, a spiritual seeker, to a revelatory experience. And this next phrase seems to perplex people. There's so many different interpretations of it. Until one is born from above, one cannot see, hear, or experience the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus didn't get it either. Born from above or born again. One may have a spiritual conversion at the baptism with water and spirit and the Holy Spirit as a baby or as an adult. But is this a one-time event? And do you know that it has happened if you've had it? I think the Bible points out that we can have spiritual experiences throughout our Christian journeys, that it's not just a one-time event, that it's an ongoing process of what we call sanctification. It's this growing in love and maturity in the faith of God. Do we always get it? Do you always get it? Do you always understand what God is up to? Maybe we're all a little like Nicodemus. Maybe we focus too much on the earthly things instead of on the heavenly things. And then maybe some of us are too heavenly minded to be any earthly good. Have you ever heard that? We should be encouraged to find a good balance, right? And what is that balance? Because Christian spirituality is all about the spiritual renewing of our minds. The spiritual re-energizing of our souls and spirits every day when we pray, 
and then when we come together to worship the Lord. We believe that we are being transformed in some small way when we pray and meditate on God's goodness, when we worship the Lord with all of our hearts and minds, despite all of our struggles and pains and what's going on in our lives, in our family and friends' lives, and even in the world. But Jesus is the heavenly things. In the Gospel of John, we find this higher theology about Jesus, how he came down from heaven to be lifted up onto the cross, to go down into death, in order to be raised up into heaven so that the Holy Spirit could be poured out and bless us. Now, Nicodemus struggled to understand this. Many of us struggle to understand this. This theology, what does this mean? What does it mean for us in our lives, in our relationship with God? But hopefully every now and then we get it. We have those epiphanies. We have a little bit of heaven right down here on earth where it meets in the middle. The Axis Mundi, that's the whole hope of being in worship as we get to have those experiences even if they're very, very small. Because Jesus is the heavenly things that we may be healed and loved. And part of the struggle that we have is we're seeking healing for our bodies and we're seeking healing for our minds and that doesn't always seem to happen. And yet we try to be faithful and seek the Lord. Say, Lord, heal us, give us a miracle. But we do know that the Lord is always here healing our souls and our spirits throughout this journey of life. And then Jesus explained to Nicodemus on a new way to look at the story of when Moses lifted up a bronze snake on a pole for the Israelites to be healed. You see, when the Israelites had been delivered out of the slavery in Egypt, they had to wander in the desert, right? We all know this story. And they had what I call OCD. Obsessive Complaining Disorder. <laughs> have you heard of this? you have any friends or family who suffer with this disease? All they do is complain. Like a broken record. I think there was a character in Saturday Night Live like that who complained all the time. Debbie Downer. We struggle with that at times, right? When things aren't going our way or we have body aches and pains, that when the people in our lives don't do what we want them to do, right? We complain or we can get caught up in it. And have you ever noticed that obsessive complaining disorder is contagious? It can spread from person to person to person. It's a dis-ease of the mind, of the soul. And so anyway, the story goes that as the Israelites continued to complain, snakes came along and bit them. Wow, that's pretty hardcore, isn't it? Can you imagine if everyone got bit by snakes when they started complaining all the time? Wow. I'm not so sure this was literal. It may have been a way to scare people down the road, right? I don't know. Could be. Could be both. And then the question is, did God send them? Or did God just allow it to happen? It's a good question. But they were all so busy complaining, they didn't even see the snakes until they got bit by them. Can you imagine? Whoa, 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 is me, poor me, poor me, poor me. Ow! Ow! And then they got sick, real sick. So Moses begged to God to heal them, to forgive them of their OCD. And God in his great mercy forgave them or simply helped them to get healed. The Lord gave them a sign to cure them. And all they had to do was stop complaining. 
and look up at the pole that Moses had raised up with a bronze snake on it. They did it and they were healed. Now the moral of the story is what? What's that? Stop complaining. Exactly. And count your blessings. What happens when you stop complaining and count your blessings? It shifts your mind. Write a gratitude list. I have a spiritual director one time. I called him up to complain. And he's a minister. So back at this time, I was a young seminarian. And I thought he would just sit there and listen to me ramp, rattle on and on and on. And he said, write a gratitude list and call me in the morning. And he hung up on me. <gasps> I couldn't believe it. The spiritual man of God hung up on me. He didn't want to hear it. I guess I had OCD. But I wrote that gratitude list, and my mind was changed. Literally, just from focusing on what is good. So that sign also became a sign based on the symbols for medicine and healing, right? That's what it is. That's the symbol. This is where it comes from, that story. It's the symbol for the medical profession in the Western world. And Jesus on the cross is the true sign of salvation and healing. Do you see the connection? We're to look to the cross. Look to Jesus for our true healing, the healing of our soul, our spirits. And God has truly given us the gifts of healing through many other means as well, through modern medicine. The miracles of surgeries, different forms of treatment. We're continually finding new ways to get healing. And that God is inspiring this. We believe it as Christians that this is what God is doing. Always seeking to help us. That Jesus Christ came into the world to bring healing and salvation. Healing and saving are the same word in the Bible. Sozo. So we are encouraged to look up to Jesus during our times of sickness, during our times of suffering, that we may struggle through it and trust that the Lord is doing something in our lives in the midst of it. We need to remember to practice our spirituality, to be re-energized. To be in touch with the Holy Spirit that is moving in our lives and all around us and within us. And this helps us to get healing for our body, minds, and spirits. Because half the battle is between our two ears sometimes. A positive attitude, a trusting, a turning over of getting out of that Woe is me, which affects the brain. And we know the older we get, it's harder to do that, right? The aches and pains can be so great. It can take all day trying to focus or get relief. And we can do the same when we're worried about our friends and family, right? We get so worried about them that we get sick. The mind is very powerful. And the body can struggle tremendously. But we hope to engage in holistic healing. And that's why we continue to look to God. To not get caught up in our complaining or sufferings. But to trust that God is doing something with us. And that we are trying to live a spiritual life. Not that we're better than others. Not that we're always going to have this mountaintop attitude and run around like everything's just fine. There are days of real struggle, aren't there? And we know we've been going through this. But this is what Jesus is talking about. This is why the Lord came to bring some relief. If I speak of heavenly things, do you believe me? People say all the time these days, I'm spiritual but not religious. Really? 
Most of the times, this means that he or she believes this or that, but he or she believes it alone. There's something about being connected to a community, to other people, to a we, to a shared way of understanding who God is and how God is moving in our lives. So in a spiritual sense, sometimes people are saying, I just want to believe what I want to believe. And I don't want to have accountability. I don't want to be interconnected. I want to do what I want. And he or she may spiritually dance alone. But that's only fun for so long, isn't it? At least I think so. It's much more fun and spiritual fulfilling to dance with others, to sing with others. And we look forward to the time when we can sing again, right? Wow, this past year has been tough. We're told not to sing, we have to have a limited. I mean, times like this where things are taken away from us, we may learn a greater gratitude for those simple things. Right? Because singing alone helps change our minds. It changes our perspective. The science behind it is if you sing just a couple minutes a day, it literally can change your attitude too. Singing a song about God can get you out of it. Whatever it is you're going through. That's the power of worship. The power of singing. How God created us. To love God with all of our heart, minds, and souls. That within us, if we do certain things, we can snap out of it. So, we are at this time continuing to pray and seek the Lord during an intense time of suffering where we all need healing. As we continue to get these vaccinations and hopefully we are starting to see more and more of the healing within the herd, they say, right? It's starting to diminish. Hopefully our fears and anxieties are lessening too and that we can sense what God has been doing in the midst of it. I just had my second shot not too long ago, the second vaccination shot. And I'm happy to say I didn't have any real side effects. But I know many people are having anxiety about trying to find the shot, get the shot, and what will happen to them. But we know that it is working. And I believe that the Lord is always behind healing within this world. So I hope that you are able to turn over your fears and anxieties about all the suffering that you're going through or your family and friends are going through. And that we will get through this COVID-19. We will come out hopefully more grateful for those small things like getting together like singing, like being able to do what we love to do. Christianity is a communal spirituality. It is a song and dance celebration of love and joy in the Lord. And no greater love and joy comes when we are with the Lord. So may we see Jesus as the heavenly things, so we may be healed and loved by God, and live out a spiritual life by the invisible power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.